Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we bless you. We worship you. We give you all glory and adoration. We give you all exaltation. Have your way, O oh Lord. That your name will be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you are connected, please can you share this on your walls? Invite your friends and families. Let's have a great time in the presence of God. The word said in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. At the right hand of the Father, there are pleasures forevermore. Yes, Lord, we bless you. We worship you. We give you all glory and adoration, all exaltation, all honor. Let it be returned back to you right now by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, give us utterance. Give us utterance to speak the word. God bless you. I want you to thank God wherever you are. Appreciate him for he is God. The word for us today is God must reign. That God must reign. He must reign. It's a must. This thing is not like we are going to oh, bend it if God should reign or he should not. It is a certainty that God will be always, he will always be the first driving force. He must reign. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. God bless you. I want you to thank God for everything that he's doing in your life. Even in this season of we celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, even though he was not born then, but we have to mark a date for him and we are going to celebrate. And I want you to know that this is a season of receiving and the season of giving. So whatever you are expected or you are expecting, you will receive. This is the day of the Lord. We are rejoicing and we shall be glad in it. The, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Oh, yes, Lord, we bless you. We worship you. We glorify, we adore you for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. Have your way, O oh Lord, for you are mightier than the mightiest. You are greater than the greatest. There is none like you. There is none that will be compared unto you. Generations will come and go, Lord, but you will remain the same. You are constant in your own. Lord, we acknowledge your, your sovereignty, your supremacy. That's one thing you cannot compromise. Everything will pass away, but you will not. You will continue to be there. You are the ancient of days, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience God. We thank you for the opportunities that we have to show our face in your presence. It's not of him that will it nor run it, but God is the one that showeth mercy. You are the one that allow us to share your space, to come to you this hour. Lord, thank you for the opportunities that is given to us. We don't take this for granted. As we come every day, we come with a broken and a contrite heart. We come with the humility of purpose and heart. We come with all of us, with the strength of the Lord and grace. Lord, make a name for yourself in our life. Show yourself mighty in us. In all that we do, Lord, Father, show yourself. Oh, yes, Lord. We come this day, all of us, that you look on us with your mercy. We are not worthy to be called thy sons and daughters, but out of thy tender mercy, have mercy upon us. Cleanse us and we shall be cleansed. Wash us and we shall be whiter than snow. Make a name for yourself in our life, O Lord Father. Show yourself great and mighty. Be God in all that we do today and going forward that your name shall be glorified. We know that it's O Lord Father, you are God that can do all things and we know that you are doing all things in us. The word said that you came and died for us in Ephesians chapter 4 to feel all things, to feel it. And that is something that we have to carry in our heart all the time because you came to complete everything. You came to feel everything, including our lives. Feel us in the areas that we cannot sustain ourselves. 
be God in where we cannot be able to represent ourselves. You are God in the cities. You are God in the village. You are God in the, in the town. You are God all over in the valley. You are God in the mountain top. You are God everywhere. The Bible said that you are God all by yourself. There is none like you. Oh, Labogo Sakataba, Rikana Mama Shikataba. Show yourself in us. Show yourself in us powerful. Show yourself in us great. Show yourself in us mighty. For you are God. Oh, Labigo Shokotobo. We commit everyone that is hearing the sound of our voice unto thy hand. Let the word of God begin to penetrate in our lives. Transform us. Every inability will become the ability of God. Every weakness will become the strength of God. Because our strength is made perfect in weakness. You are God that will come in our weakness and show yourself strong. The Bible said in Romans chapter 8, 26, for the spirit helps our inabilities, our infirmity, our weaknesses. Lord, so you created us purposely to be insufficient, incomplete, that your name and your glory shall be made manifest. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for looking at somebody like us that are not even worthy to stand in your presence, but you call us to come to you. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, come all you that labor and are heavy lady, I will give you rest. We are here today. We are here. Lord, give us rest in every area of our life. The Bible says by the stripes of Jesus Christ in Isaiah 53. We are made healed. The healing power of God, let it come upon us right now. Lord, we agree that we are healed in our feet. We are healed in our bones and our marrows and arteries. We are healed in every ligament in us. We are healed on our knees. In our ways, we are healed. Every pain, let it go now. We are healed in our ankle. We are healed all over at our spine, in our shoulder, in our arms. We are healed in our legs. Every part of all, let all the organs in our life begin to receive the healing power of God right now. By the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. We are healed when we go out and when we come back in. Let the healing power of God show. Show yourself mighty. Heal us and we shall be healed. Today is a new day, a day of the power. The Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. The bread of life is the healing power of God. Let the bread, the measure of bread that we need to sustain us every day begin to manifest. In all that we do, we shall find a fresh bread. The anointing that we break every yoke. The Bible said, that the anointing destroys yokes. Yokes shall be destroyed. Bondages shall be broken right now in our lives. Arise, O Lord, in us and begin to make us to move in thy strength. Arise, shine, for your light is come. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. The Bible says, and the glory of the Lord shall be risen upon thee. Let the glory of God begin to rise in us. Rise up in us, O Lord, Father, in every way and every move. Be God. Show yourself mighty. There is none like, like you, O Lord. There is none like you, O Lord. There is none like you. There is absolutely none like you. There is none like you. Lobogo Sakata Bababa. There is none like you, O Lord. We worship you. We exalt, we magnify you for you are God. Lobogo Sakata Barika Rabababa. Makotorobo Sekete Balikanama. Lord, we invite you to take absolute control of our presence. Take absolute control of where we are, our vicinities and proximity. Take control of our life, our, our families, our children, our husbands and wives, our ministry. Take absolute control. Lord, possess us and we shall be possessed by you, by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you are God, O Lord, Father. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, hallelujah, the Bible was telling us how God is protected in every area and in every way. Lord, we thank you, Lord, Father, for showing yourself mighty. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the we worship you, Lord. We exalt, we magnify you. We glorify you for everything. 
The Bible says Christ did not rise in vain. He did not rise in vain. Labogo sakata baba baba. Rebaga shikoto bo likana masikata baba baba. Rekotorobo sokotobo. For every man in his own order, Christ is the first fruit. Afterward, they that are in Christ will come to God. In verse 23. In 24, the Bible said, Then come at the end, and when he shall be delivered up to the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down every rule and all authorities and power, God will begin to put it down. And I want you to see in verse 25, where we have our title. He said, For he must reign. God must reign. That's why I put it, for God must reign. God must reign in your family. God must reign. It is not something that you will consider. It is a must. The Bible says, for he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. God must reign. So it's either you allow him to reign now or at the end he will still reign. Let me tell you something. Whether we believe it or not, at the end, everyone that is alive by the end, even the dead will see God. And they will know that Jesus Christ is the Lord. When the trumpet shall sound, people will not have time to say, oh, it's not Christ. Or whether it's Christ. There's no going to be time for arguments and the times for trying to do and the due diligence. We have to do it now. So the Bible said, for God must reign. For he must reign till he has put all, not some enemies, until he has put all enemies under his feet. Every enemy that is ag against you, God shall put under his feet. Every one of them shall begin to go under. When you say something is under, they are not in the same capacity where you will stand. The Bible said, Jesus said to us, Luke chapter 10 verse 19, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpent and scorpion and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies but you. So when we tread upon something, they shall be under your feet. The Bible said the young liars and the others Shall you trample under feet? Psalm 91. We are going to come to that right now. But I want you to know that he must, he will put all enemies under his feet. I want us to see the book of Psalm 110. Psalm 110. Oh, Yes, Lord, we worship you. We exalt you. We give you all glory and adoration. Oh, la bobo sakatabariko robo sokotobo. If you look at verse verse one, the Bible said, "The Lord said to my Lord." I want you to see it. The Lord said unto my Lord, "Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool." So. When we are talking about putting the enemy under, that is where they belong. The Lord said to my Lord, God said to Jesus Christ, sit down at my right hand until I make thy enemy thy footstool. But look at verse 2. He said, the Lord shall send the rod, authority, power of thy strength out of Zion. Zion is the church. Zion is me and you. Until we begin to carry that rod, the authority, the scepter, he said, rule thou in the midst of the enemy. That means the enemy must be under our control. We must rule. We must overcome. We must be above the enemy. Rule thou in the midst of the enemy. Verse 3. He said, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauty of holiness. From the womb of the morning, thou hast due of thy youth. The womb of the morning will deliver everything that you need. The Bible said, the Lord has sworn and will not repent that thou art a priest forever after the order of Mekishalek. The Lord has sworn, it is a must. But I want you to understand that the devil is under. The God said to my Lord Jesus Christ, sit down until every enemy, including death, shall be under your feet. Until all his enemy has been put down under his footstool. And the Lord sent his rod of the strength out of me. Say, God, help me to begin to carry my rod. The strength of God, that is the rod, the authority. Let the scepter not depart from me. The Bible says the, 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 the authority, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh come. So we are the sons of God, the sons of praise. Judah is praised. So they let the rod of God 
be upon Man Zion, be upon us. And we shall use it to rule in the midst of the enemy. We shall whoop every enemy. We shall put them down because God has given us authority. Jesus said, behold, I give you power. I give you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemy. Today we are talking about the reigning of the Lord. God is going to rule. God will rule supreme. He will rule as the almighty. He will rule as God that is all and all. He said, rule thou in the midst of thy enemy. So the, rule, the rulership of God is not God himself that will be manifested. We, the sons and the daughters of God, are the ones that will manifest God because we are the custodians of the world. We are the ones that are the embodiment of Christ here on earth today. So we are going to be the manifestation of the glory of God in everywhere we find ourselves. We must manifest him by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus. So I want you to say to yourself, I will begin to rule as I am ruling right now in, in the midst of my enemy. Every enemy of my life, I will be above them. I will rule them by the power and the authority. And I'm not ruling by my strength because I have received rod. I have received authority from Jesus Christ. The Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Lord, as I put on the whole armor, as I begin to rule in the city of Liberty, in the county of Gwinnett, in the state of Georgia, in the United States of America, we shall rule in the mix of our enemies. Every enemy of our family, whatever the enemy is representing, maybe some of the enemies can come in form of sickness. Some of them will come in form of poverty. Some will come in form of shame. Some will come in form of pain. Some will come in form of affliction. But whatever the enemy has as a face, we shall rule in them. We shall rule in the midst of them. We shall rule. We shall be above them. We shall stand and speak the word of God. We shall overcome them in the name of Jesus Christ. For the Bible says, he that is of God overcometh the world, even our faith. He that have received Christ, he that is in Christ is an overcomer. In the name of Jesus Christ. So let's continue in that the book of First Corinthians, hallelujah, that we are reading now in verse 15, in chapter 15. So God here is saying that in verse 24. Hallelujah. No, we are in 25 now. He said, for he must reign. That's where I was. He must reign. God must reign. Till he had put all enemies, not some, under his feet. Then the Bible said that the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. So many of us think that death has no end. It has an end. The Bible said that the last enemy that Jesus will destroy with his infinite ability is death. Today, I speak that death has no power over you. If death could not hold him captive, the Bible says, even in the grave, Jesus was Lord. He was Lord in the grave. He was Lord before the grave. He was Lord. So death will be destroyed. He is the last enemy. Let death be destroyed in your life now. In the name of Jesus, the death of physical death, spiritual death, financial death, death of any kind, let it be destroyed. The Bible says the, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. I'm talking about D-E-A-T-H. It shall be destroyed. It shall be destroyed by the power and the authority in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Lord, we shall destroy the spirit of death. Every sorrow and death is gone today. By the power and the authority, every shadow of death. The Bible said, even if I walk through the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Today, let the shadows of death be destroyed. The Bible says Jesus, when he came out from the mountain in the book of Matthew chapter 4, he went down in verse 15. He went down to the land of Naphtali and the land of Zebulun, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people that were in darkness, they saw a great light. And light sprung out of darkness. And those that were in the shadow of death, every spirit of death that is hovering around you, that have been hovering in your family, we cancel it today because the Bible says it shall be destroyed also. It has an end. The Bible says surely there's an end to a thing. And the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut off. Everything you are expecting today, God will give to you. Receive it by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Verse 27 says, For he had put all things, all things, under 
his feet. I want you to know that the devil is perpetual position is under, not above. He has put all things under his feet. But when he has, when he said all things are put under his feet, it is manifest that he expected, that he is expected, which did not put things under him. It is manifested that he is accepted. God is removed from that. God is not under Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And when all things are subdued under him, then shall the son of also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Let God be all in everything in your life. That God may be all in all. He may be glorified. He may be all in everything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for you are God. We worship you. We exalt. We magnify you. We glorify you. We adore you. Lord, you are God. You are all in all. You are all in everything that we do. You are all in all that we, we expect. You are all that in all that we have experienced. You are all, O oh Lord Father. Show yourself mighty, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And the God we are talking about is not a God that you just see him anyhow. He's not a God you throw by the corner, you just see him standing by the roadside. God is not begging, he's not hanging. God is everything. The whole earth and heaven is assimilated in him. He created them. He can yank anything out of himself. He's a mighty God. He's great and big. I want you to see the... the the revelation of God, according to the book of First Timothy chapter 6, verse 15 and, and, and 16. In fact, the 16th part is where I'm going. But I want you to see verse 15. He says, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and the only potentate, the king of kings and lord of lords, that Jesus Christ. In verse 16, he says, who only has immortality. God has immortality dwelling in light which no man can approach unto whom no man had seen nor can see to whom be honor and power everlasting. God is immortality that is dwelling in an unapproachable light. That is what the Bible is saying. That light is unapproachable. And you say, okay, if God is unapproachable, how can we come to him? We see parts of him. God shows us the dimensions of him that he wants us to see. Oh, the Bible says no man has seen him and no man can see him. It's only his son, Jesus Christ, the King of the kings and the Lord of lords have, that have access to that light. The Bible says God is light. God is also love. If you look at the book of First John chapter 1, verse 4, in him was life, that was Jesus Christ. And the life was the light of men. So when you see light come, I'm not talking about the sun and the moon. After God created the, the, the light, God later created the sun and the moon. Some people thought that when God created light that it was the sun no light was what carries him that is his presence he comes as an unapproachable light in the book of psalm 18 in verse 11 and 12 the bible says he made darkness his secret place so when you are trying to talk about the dwelling in the secret place of the most high sometimes you think you are going to be somewhere it's a, a cloud of darkness the bible says he made darkness his secret place his power Pavilion ran about him with dark waters and dark cloud of sky. Verse 12, he said, at the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passes, hails and stone and coals of fire begin to spring out. But God is in dark. God is not the darkness. God is, God is not the cloud. God is not the hails and the stone. You remember when God came to God had a deal with Moses. I'm coming to see you. And Moses was there in the mountain waiting for God. When the, the, the Bible said hail and stone and thunder and lightning and fire was moving. Moses had to hide himself. God is neither of any of those. The Bible says he's an unapproachable light. A light that cannot be approached. Let that power come upon you right now. Oh, re ba 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 shikata ba 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 re kotorobo sakata ba 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 by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, show yourself mighty in us. For you are God that has a secret place. But we have discovered it. The Bible says, He that dwells there shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. 
Oh, yes, Lord. So we are going to read Psalm 91 now. I want us to pray Psalm 91 today. Verse 1, the Bible says, He that dwell in that secret place. Because if we're talking about a secret, the Bible says, He made darkness a secret place. So what is that secret place? In Psalm 91, it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. How can somebody have a shadow in darkness? So sometimes when you read the Word of God, it's, it's, it's like it's, it's a mystery. You get in there, you don't know where you are getting in, but you get in anywhere, and you stay there. You stay there, and God will begin to converse with you. If you look at the book of Exodus 20, 21, the Bible said, and the children of Israel were standing from afar, and Moses said to the people, fear not for, in, in, okay, verse 21, he said, and the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. God was inside that darkness. And the moment he came close, God began to speak in verse 22. And the Lord said to Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. They were looking at Moses and, and a cloud. And God said, I'm talking to you from heaven. It's a mystery. But the Bible says we dwell in that secret place. And we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snares of the fowlers and from the noisiest pestilence. Ask God to deliver you today from every snare of fowlers and from every noisome pestilence. Every pestilence that walk around in new day, in night, the one that fly, witches or wizard. Let God deliver you today. Surely, the Bible said, surely he shall deliver me. Verse 3 of Psalm 91. He shall deliver me. He shall deliver you. He shall deliver your children. He will deliver your family from the foulers of the enemy and from the noisome pestilence. Lord, deliver me today. Deliver me from every noisome pestilence. Deliver me from the foulers. Every pakoto robo sekete baba baba baba. Prakata rabali kanama shikotobo. Deliver me, O Lord Father, and I shall be delivered from every noisome pestilence, from any power of darkness. Nebogo shikete ba ikara baba baba. Fire massacre in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the power of God begin to ascend and descend in our lives now. And God is delivering you. Come out from every dark place that the devil has caged you in and enter into the light of God. Even though God dwells in a secret place, but God is light. You shall be seen wherever you are there. The authority and the power in the name of Jesus. In verse 4 of Psalm 91, the Bible says, He shall cover thee with his feather, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. The truth is Jesus Christ. Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man shall come to my Father except by me. In John chapter 8, verse 32, he says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So he shall cover us under his feather and under his wing. His truth shall be our shield and buckler. Say, God, cover me today. Cover my children, my family. Cover my business, our jobs. Cover us. Cover my life under your feather and under your wing. Shall thou trust? I will, I, I will trust on, on you. I will trust for the truth shall be my shield and my buckler. The truth about who you are shall be my shield. Is what is going to protect me. Protect me, O oh Lord. Protect my family. Protect our ministry. Protect the anointing that you put upon us. Protect the grace of God in our life. Protect us, O oh Lord, Father. Everything that you have given us to do, let it be protected by the power and the authority. Why do we have to pray for what God has given us to be protected? Because we need to pray. The Bible says men ought always to pray and not faint. It is great. We are created. We are creatures of prayer. Hallelujah. And we have to pray. Verse 5, he said, Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that flyeth by day. I don't care what is flying out there. The Bible says we shall not be afraid of it. That does not mean that terrors does not fly. The Bible acknowledges that there are things that fly. There are arrows. There are terrors that move around. But he said, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrows that flyeth by day. I take authority over the day and night. David said in Psalm 21, 121, the sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. Whatever has been programmed in these two big energies, the sun and the moon, today we rebuke them. They cannot smite us in any form. 
the only good things shall come to us. Whatever has been programmed in the day or against us negatively, it shall not come near our dwelling. Whatever the devil has set in the night, under the moon, the moon will reject it today. Only the blessings of God that will come from the night and day to us. Thou shall not be afraid of the terror. Today, every terrorized, terrorism, any form of terror, is it form of illness or sickness, the men of the underworld, is it police case, whatever it is that will terrorize your life, sickness and infirmity, Omicron, COVID-19, what is called Delta variant, it shall not come near your dwelling. Hallelujah. We are not afraid of it. We are not afraid of any terror that move around, the one that fly it. We are not afraid of any sickness, of pestilence. We are not afraid of poverty. There are drums of shutting down again. There are many drums of evil, that evil days are coming. Don't be afraid of it, because God is in charge. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that flyeth by day, nor the pestilence, again, that walketh in darkness. There are pestilence that walk in darkness, nor the destruction, which is death, destruction that wastes at noon day. Every spirit of destruction or destroyer. The Bible say, God said, I created the waster to destroy. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16. I created the waster to destroy. But in verse 17, he said, There is no weapon that is formed against you that shall prosper. And every tongue that will rise up against you in judgment, you shall likewise condemn. So the Bible said, Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror, nor the pestilence that walk at walk at darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. Lord, we are not afraid. We are not afraid. We agree today that fear is not in our DNA. Today, we are not afraid because we have God. With God, the Bible says all things are possible. Let the possibility of the glory of God begin to make manifest. We stand in the authority of, that is delegated unto us in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. We agree that we are not afraid. From today, we are bold. The Bible says the righteous shall be as bold as a lion. We go out there and begin to devour the enemy. You say rule in the midst of the enemy. We cannot be afraid to rule. We cannot be afraid to judge. We cannot be afraid to express our dominion. Because we are creatures that are to dominate. The Bible says, God said, let us make man in our image. Let them have dominion over the fishes, over the, over the fowls of the air, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Today, we must begin to express that authority we begin to express that power, that glory, by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus, to the glory of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. But seven, he said, a thousand shall fall by thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand but none shall come near your dwelling. So the Bible did not say evil things will not happen. We will hear of death and drums of death. A thousand falling. People are dying every day. The Bible says a thousand. And when God says a thousand, it's a thousand into a thousand. That is a million. If God says 10,000, God is talking about 10 million. Because the Bible says a day in the eyes of God is like a thousand years. So millions of people will fall by your side. Even more millions will fall by your right hand but none shall come near your dwelling. Today, we decree and declare, no evil, no death can come near our dwelling. Because a thousand can fall in our sight, 10,000 by our right hand, but none. The Bible says none. None. I say none today. None. Nobody shall die around us. We shall not go through any loss. Not even a loss of money, not a loss of family member, not a loss of job, loss of anything. We shall not lose nothing. Nothing shall be lost. Nothing shall cast thy young in us. Because a thousand shall fall by our side. Even 10,000 by our right hand, that is resulting to millions. But none shall come near our dwelling. None shall come near us. The Bible says, only with our eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked. When God is talking about reward, it's not like God is going to give them money. It's judgment. When you are talking about the reward of the wicked, God is going to judge the wicked man. God is going to judge evil men. God is going to judge evil people around us. The judgment of the evil man, the day, today is their day. And God will use us to judge them. When we are talking about God judging them, God is not coming from heaven. God has us here on earth. The Bible says we are God's battle axe. Jeremiah 51, 
He said, we are his battle axe and the weapon of war. We are his battle axe. God will use you to break about nations. God will use you to destroy the husband, the, 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 the husband and the child. Today, begin to stand as God and begin to destroy everything. Lebogo Sakataba, that is on your way to your destiny. I'm telling you, your destination is God. Once you locate your destination, getting to your destiny is easy. Don't ever go to your destiny if you don't have a destination. You must have your destination that it will end up with God. You began with God, you must end with God. If God is the ultimate destination, then my destiny is in him. The Bible says, in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. In the book of Acts 17, 28. So if I know that he's by this, I told you destination and destiny, yeah, they have DDs, but they are different. So, and you cannot get to a destiny without a destination. I see people run out and you say, I'm pursuing my career. And the end of 20 years, they are still looking for that career because they don't have a destination. If you don't know where you are going, if you get there, you will not know. You must identify where you are going first. Destination must be outlined, must be articulated. Then when you begin to pursue destiny, it will correspond because if you cover 10 miles, you know. If you cover 100 miles, you know how many miles left to get to it. But if you just keep going, I'm going to my destiny, I'm going to my destiny. Come on, you will not get there. That is not your portion. God is going to make your destiny to be guaranteed. Your destiny is guaranteed in him. A thousand shall fall by your side, 10,000 by your right hand. None shall come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the wicked, the reward of the wicked. Because thou had made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Why? Because God is your des destination. Habitation is which is where I'm going. God, you have made him your habitation. So your road to your destiny will be easy because God is your habitation. Because Lord, we have made you, we have made the Lord, which is our refuge, even the most high. He is the most high. He's the ultimate. He's the almighty. He's all powerful, all glorious, all excellent. Everything will return it back to you today. Receive all glory and adoration. Receive every power. Receive everything. You are our destination. You are our habitation. Come on, in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 10, Psalm 91, verse 10. He said, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. No evil. When I say no evil, no evil. Evil can come in any form. But not even one of them, whether small evil, 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 big evil, absolute big evil, great evil, it cannot come near you. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. Whatever that has plagued men, whatever has plagued people in your family, in your community, in your tribe, in your habitation, in the place that you dwell, in your domain, they shall not come near you. The Bible said in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. But in verse 2, it said, There shall be darkness upon the earth, and gross darkness the people. So when you say your light has come, everywhere is supposed to illuminate. No, God said evil will still be there, people will still die, but you will not be affected. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. Hallelujah. There shall be darkness upon the earth and cross darkness the people. But the Bible said in verse 3, For the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen in thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy rising, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Thy sons and thy daughters shall lose their baby around you today. Stand like the man Zion. You are unshakable, unmovable. You are standing in the name of Jesus. We are standing on the rock. Jesus is that rock. If it is where you continue to stand after the devil has tried you, that in verse, verse 11 will begin to manifest. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. For he shall give his angels charge. Let the angels of God be given to me today. Lord, I received angelic visitation. I received angelic help. Let the angels of God manifest in my life. Keep me in all my ways. Protect me 
Alo bogo sakataba. Makoto robo likana mama. Nebraga shikataba likoto sokotobo. Keep me all of Allah in all my ways. Give angels charge. Give them charge, O Lord. I pray thee, O Lord, that you send your angels and give them charge over me to keep me in all my ways, in all where I go. Everything I do, I anchor upon you, Lord, today. By the authority and the power in the name of Jesus, they shall bear thee upon thy hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Lord, the angels of God will begin to carry me in their hands, in their wings. We shall fly in eagle's wings. Today, we shall go to the altitude of life. No evil shall befall us. The Bible says in Job 28 that there's a place where the young lions have not been able to walk upon. They cannot see it even. The fowls of the vultures, the scavengers, all the evil birds cannot trodden upon that place. That is the presence of God. That is the secret place of the Most High. That is where we are dwelling. The angels of God is always operating there according to the will of God. They shall bear us in their hand. Please, we dash our foot against the stone. Today, the Bible says, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragons, shall thou trample under feet. Today, we are going back again on trampoline. God has given us ability to be above and beyond. I'm telling you, if you hold on to the wheel and to hold on to the word and stay with God, without changing your mind, without compromising. The devil will try to push you. There will be some time, there will be so much affliction that you want to give up. Don't give up. Your miracle is on the way. Miracle is coming your way. The Bible said, arise, shine for your light is come. They shall bear you up in their hands. Please, you dash your feet against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Today, every lion in your life, let them begin to go under you trample upon them. I'm talking about the, the lion of the spirit. Every lion like. The Bible says the devil is rowing like a lion seeking for whom to devour. Not you, not a member of your family, not in this season. This season shall be so peaceful for you. If you have never enjoyed Christmas before, this is the first time you shall receive that grace. The highways and the byways shall be respectful to you. The blood shall be pleaded upon everywhere you go. The place of your work, you shall have peace round about. The Lord shall make himself strong and mighty. In your life the bible said thou shalt tread thou shalt tread thou shalt tread upon the young lions and the others you shall bear you shall trample under them the young lions and the dragons shall thou trample under your feet today receive that grace today by the authority and the power in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. Because he had set his love upon me. That is what God is saying now. And what will happen? Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Begin to pray. Say God set me on high. Set me on high. Every pinnacle of where you are going the pinnacle of your job, the pinnacle of your business, the pinnacle of your career, you will get to the top. You will not be at the bottom. It doesn't matter whether you start at the bottom. It's okay. The Bible says, thou shalt not neglect the days of little beginning. Though your beginning shall be small, but your end shall greatly increase. He said, because he had loved me, he has known my name, I will say, God say, I will set him. I will. I will set him on high. I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. You have known his name because you loved him. God loved us before we loved him. But God is saying, I'm setting you on high now. Begin to climb the ladder of your career, your ministries, your business. Begin to climb that ladder of success. Where nobody has attended in your family, you will begin to get there. Your children will go to the height that nobody has been in your generation. The Bible says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Your generation shall be blessed today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, Lord. The Bible says he has he will set you up high. He will set you on high because you have known his name. I want you to see what will happen to you in the book of Psalm 112, verse 1. He said, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. Look at what will happen to that man. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, 
that delighted greatly in his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Every seed that comes from you, whether your kindness, goodness, your children, everything that has emanated from you shall be mighty, mighty upon the earth. Seeds don't die. They bring forth harvest. Your seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The Bible says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Your generation, your children, your children, children, your children, 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 your children, 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 your children, 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 they shall up to the 10th generation. They shall be blessed. Verse 3 says, wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endure forever. From today, begin to receive it. Riches and wealth shall be in your house, shall be in your household, shall be in your family, shall be in your community, shall be. It is the blessings of God. The Bible says it makes rich and add no sorrow. So don't apologize when God begins to bless you. Don't be don't, be, don't feel bad that you are blessed because you are, shall be blessed. I say, in blessing, God will bless you. And any man that curses you is cursed. Today, so receive it by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Upon the upright, there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved ever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Your name shall be remembered forever. Look at what the Bible says. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. They shall remember you even after hundreds of years. You shall be remembered today. The Bible says he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees his desires upon his enemies. In verse 9 of Psalm 112, he said he had dispraised, despaired. He had given to the poor. His righteousness endured forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. What do you know that is a horn? A horn is like a, a, a horn. You know, God is going to make you to grow a horn like a unicorn. The one that goes straight, not the cough horn, like the ram horn. But God says, your horn, your horn shall be exalted. Your authority, your, uh, your, 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 your ability, your capacity, you will begin to receive honor from today. Let the honor come to you from the right, left, and center in the name of Jesus. Not just will men honor you, God will honor you first. When God honor you, men will begin to follow suit. The wicked shall not see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with teeth and meet away. And the desires of the wicked shall perish. Every wicked man, their desire against you shall perish. God will destroy them. Oh, Labogo Sakata Bababa. Maketereba. God said, because you have known my name. Let's go back to Psalm 91, verse 15, so that we can finish it. The Bible says, He shall call upon me, as we are calling him now. He said, And I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. Oh, Labagasi Kataba. Many of you are getting to the place of honor. Honor is the highest level of leadership. People will just not honor you with mouth. Say, if you hear, I hear a lot of people when you go back home to Africa and you're walking in the streets of Lagos, you see some people beating drum, telling you I honor you, and some people honor you with their mouth. Honor comes with it. The Bible says, Honor the Lord thy God with thy substance. And with the first fruit of thy kid. So God will say, you will be honored. You shall call him and he will answer. From today, your prayers will not be far from God. Every word you call, God will answer you. In, in Jeremiah 33 verse 3, say, call upon me. I will hear and answer you and show you great and mighty things. And here he's saying again in verse 15 of the book of Psalm 91. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. How many of us will tell our children, say, well, you have trouble, call me. God is a troublemaker. He said, in trouble, call me. Whether things are good or bad, call me. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Today, let honor begin to come to you. Let honor begin to come to you on every area of your life. God will honor you. God will honor his word in your life. God will honor you in your life, in the life of your children. God will honor you in your community. God will honor you in your family. God will honor you when you go out and when you come in. Thank you, Holy Ghost.
Thank you for it is done now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the last but not the least verse in Psalm 91, it says, verse 16, he says, with long life. Hello, How many of you want to live long? Oh, yakataraba, shikataba. With long life, with long life, with long life will I satisfy him. That means your satisfaction will be added with life. God says the, the, the fullness of time, the number of your years shall be fulfilled on earth. With long life will I satisfy him. Oh, le bogo sakataba. Re kataraba, shikotobo. Makitaba, lakitaba, sakataba. With long life, will I satisfy him? In the book of Psalm 118, 118, if you look at verse 17, the Bible said there, I shall not die. I want you to say that to yourself. I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord, to declare the counsel of the Lord. Today, I will not die. God said he will satisfy you with long life. You are going to live. You will live above Everyone that have lived in your community, in your family, long life is your portion. God is going to satisfy you that. He said he will show you salvation. With long life will I satisfy him. Begin to pray. In the mix of evil, in the mix of sickness and infirmity, in the mix of COVID, whatever the devil is throwing out there, it shall not affect you. Your life is protected. You are intact. You are covered with the blood. I will not die. I shall not die. I will live to declare the work of the Lord. The Lord has chastised me so, but he had not given me over unto death. That means David said, even if the devil try anything, God can even chastise me, but he will not. He will not give me over. Thank you, Jesus. It is done now. In the name of Jesus, we give you all glory and adoration. We exalt and magnify you. I want to pray for some, some of you here. I want to pray for you for God to begin to do something in your life specifically. This is the season of giving and receiving. Remember the words that we have today. For God must reign. If the Bible says God must reign, he will reign. And we took it from the book of First, First Corinthians chapter 15. If you look at verse 25, he said, For he must reign till he has put all his enemies under his feet. God will reign. So don't even bother. If somebody is not coming to God today, it's either they come now early or they come later. But God must, if you hear the word must, it is a certainty. He said, For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. All. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So God must reign. Even, so God must reign. Even death cannot hold him captive. He must reign. Jesus must reign forever. He is supreme. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. Lord, I pray for your daughter, for your son, everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice, and those that will hear me in ritual, receive the power of God. Let God be supreme in your life. That when people see you, they see God. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Today, begin to manifest him. In the book of Hebrews 13, the Bible says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let God be God in me. Let him reign in my life. Let him reign in our ministry. Let him reign in our ministries. Let him reign in our job, in our careers, in our marriages. God is supreme. He shall reign. He shall reign. He shall reign. He shall reign. Receive it now. Let God begin to reign. He must reign in your life. God must reign in your family. He must reign everywhere you go. When people see you, they will see God. The Bible says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Riches and wealth shall be in his house. Today you shall stand in the awe of God. You will begin to stand in his awe. You will begin to advance. You will begin to move in the might of God. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad. Rejoice, and I say rejoice. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Today, you are going forward. The Bible says, God tell Moses, say, tell the children of Israel, it is time for them to move forward. Begin to move forward in every way. Even in the spirit, you will never see yourself in your primary school again. You will never see yourself going back to college, even though you have graduated in college long time. That is the spirit of retrogression, backwardness. You will not be removing cobwebs as you are going out. Every time you come out, there's always cobwebs in your front. Witchcraft. The devil is trying to delay you. You will not see yourself 
crawling or walking like a tortoise. Every time you see that, that is spirit of, of delay. Every spirit of delay is canceled today. You must reign. You must reign. And how do you reign? You reign supreme. If God said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, Psalm 110, verse 1, until I make all your enemies to be under your footstool. The only way that the enemy be under a footstool is when you are supreme, when you are reigning, when you are standing tall, when you are becoming who God has called you. In the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 19, but the Bible said the earnest expectations of creation wait for the manifestations of the sons of God. Begin to manifest God. Let the God in you begin to manifest. Show yourself as God everywhere you go. Begin to show yourself mighty. Be God in all that you do today by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for it is done. I give you all glory. Testimony shall abound in you. Every sickness that has been healed now, you will testify. I want you to check your body. Begin to check your body. Every part of you that has not functioned well before. By the reason of this anointing, healing is taking place from the crowns of your head to the sole of your foot. Let the power of God come upon you now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Rebogo sakata ba 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 ba. Makata ba God must reign. He must reign supreme. He must reign supreme in your life. He must reign supreme in your ministry, in your job, in your career. He must reign supreme. Oh, labaga shikataba. Let everything that is unwanted get out. Everything that is unwanted in your family get out. Character wise, get out. Attitude, get out. Every aura that is not, that is not, um, com what is called, what, 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 what do I want to say? That is not complementing the will of God in you. Let them begin to leave. Everything that does not represent, the person that God have created you, the person, the woman, the man, the person that God have made you to be, that is coming out, let them go now. Die in the name of Jesus and let glory come out of you. Glory shall shine. Arise from thy slumber. Move in the might of God. Get out from thy weaknesses and begin to stand in the strength of God, in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God and begin to overcome every wise of the enemy right now. By the power and the authority in the name of Jesus. Ah, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It is done. Hallelujah. It is done. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to begin to watch your life from today. If you believe this word, the Bible says, if thou can believe, you can say to this mountain, be removed, and without a doubt in your heart, be cast into the sea, and it shall be done if you don't doubt. If you have believed God today for healing, you have believed God for prosperity, you have believed God for anything, watch your life from today. Things will begin to change right now. Things have changed. Everything that become new, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ is a new creature, all things have passed away. Behold, everything has become new. Things have become new in your life. You are coming out to live a new life. The newness of the life of Christ is manifesting in you. You shall be the envy of your family. I say from today, nations shall bow before you. Let men serve you. Let women serve you. Everywhere you go, God will position people that will carry your back. That will help you. That will help you to fulfill destiny and purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for it is done now. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. In Jesus Christ, name we pray. I want to pray with you. If you are here, you have not received Jesus Christ. Because of our time, we could have said more things. We have a lot to say. But we have to keep the time. I want to pray with you by the authority and the power. The Bible said in Romans chapter 10 verse 9, if we confess the Lord Jesus Christ and we believe in our heart that he died and resurrected, we shall be saved. So I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected for my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Congratulations, you are saved. 
look for a Bible believing church, fuse yourself, write to us. You need to be delivered, you need to be prayed for, you need any form of miracle, signs, and wonders. You want somebody to talk to, counseling. Are you being pursued by demon in any form of way? Connect with us. You are in Georgia, in Atlanta. We are here, right here in Atlanta. Write us and we shall come to you or you will come to us. In any way, God is going to visit you. But if we cannot be rich, look for a Bible-believing church where the word of God is preached and commit yourself there and grow in the Lord and your life will never be the same again. I love you all with all my heart. But above all, Jesus loves you the most. Have a wonderful week. I will see you tomorrow. Amen.